So a little different change of scenery this morning. Um, I had a friend that was going to Maine with a camper to deliver a camper and was headed up and got a cylinder three misfire. And uh, it's the same truck that I put the number seven injector connector on not long ago if y'all were watching my videos. Um, if you weren't, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, check it out. Um, anyway, code was, I want to say, I'm working off memory here, because I am, you know, I don't have it right in front of me, P0089, which had something to do with the fuel pressure regulator, and also, that code came up, I cleared it about two weeks ago in uh, Utah, I ran across them, and they were having that code, and I cleared it, never came back. Then, uh, yesterday, P, what, P020C came up with a cylinder three misfire. And it running rough, shaking like crazy and all that. So I called the dealer up here. Well, they called the dealer, then I called the dealer and they said it would be like three weeks and they didn't have a chance to get them in. I came to the conclusion, my personal opinion, I could be dead wrong. I don't know why I'm, I'm not a not an ASC mechanic. I'm just a guy trying to help out another driver. My opinion, and also I went to, I do not remember the name of the dealer in Elkhart, but the Chevrolet dealer in Elkhart. I went there. Uh, there's two guys in there that are awesome. They spent a lot of time with me yesterday trying to diagnose this over, basically over the phone. I was there in person, but I was talking to the driver and they were telling us the codes and stuff. Anyway, we come to the conclusion to go ahead and replace the number three injector and the number three injector connector. I've never done an injector before on one of these trucks on the L5Ps, but there's a first time for everything. I own one too, I need to get familiar with it. I hate that I'm doing it the first time on someone else's truck. And this long drive up here, you know, but I just can't stand. I've been stuck in a position where I've been sitting before and it's not fun, especially when you're having to pay at the hotel room every night until the dealer can get you in. So I just figured I would grab an injector and a connector because they did have the parts in Elkhart. They did not have the parts up here. I just figured I'd grab the parts and come on up and see what I could do. If all else fails, I'll do this. <clears throat> I'll do this and it won't fix it. And then they'll still have to take the truck to the dealer. So worth a shot. So I'll be there in about 20 minutes and we'll, just, we'll get started. Well, here it is. Poor thing looks about as scared of me as I am it. I believe we'll be all right though. First thing I'm gonna do, I plugged into it and I've got the all tail out. And I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna do this, just so it'll read it quick. I'll scan. And like I said, I've only had this for, this is probably the third or fourth time I've used it. No, I don't know what I'm doing with it. Just learning as I go. Diesel. DTCs. Current ignition on probably help. I had it also. We didn't have to listen to the ding in though. Cylinder three injector timing, cylinder three injector A circuit, cylinder three injector A circuit. There's the P P zero two zero C that we were talking about. There's a P two zero three that usually comes up when I replace the injector connector. So I'm gonna clear this. They stayed so that's probably I just want to start it up and make sure it doesn't throw any other codes so this is the first time I will have heard the truck run since I've been here yeah. 
sounds smooth enough. Really smooth. Now when they started up this morning, they said it was super, super rough. So, let's hit the skate. I'll go right back in, read the codes again while it's running. Because there's no check engine light or anything. Everything is showing okay right now. Alright, so my interpretation of this is it's still recognizing that there was an issue with the injector or something's going on because it keeps coming back up. It's coming back up permanent. And my what I know about that is when you get the issue fixed, that will go away. So I'm going to go ahead and jack it up, start getting the fender liner out. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. But I will get the truck jacked up, fender liner out, and get it tore down to the next interesting part. I'm assuming that you guys have seen that now before. So the first thing I wanted to do is disconnect the batteries. So I got the batteries disconnected, and they're not touching. Um, I went ahead and took the air filter off. There's that clamp right there. I put a rag over it, keep stuff from blowing down in because it's really windy here today. Unplug the sensor out on the side of the air box, and there's two little little clamps with clips like this that push into the air box. Just take a little tool, something like this, and just pop them out. So I got those popped out. The air box just pushes in, three little rubber pushes. Just when you get loose over there, over there, you should be able to just grab it and pull and feel it pop, wiggle it back and forth and it'll pop and the whole housing come out one time. When it comes out, uh, the next thing you wanna do is this heat shield, there's three 10 millimeter bolts in it. Go ahead and take it off, it comes off easy enough. Make sure you have somewhere to put your bolts and all that stuff. Uh, the next thing I did was took the inner fender liner out. Let's see, the next thing I did was the heat shield on this pipe right here. I took it loose, three bolts. They weren't bad to get at, but I can't get the shield off. So next thing I'm gonna do is take this bolt out. There's a matching bolt to it on the other side. And then right straight down there, there's a bolt on each side. I'm hoping once I get those bolts out that I can get the heat shield off of that pipe. Okay, so the EGR pipe, I'm not 100% sure what it's called. It looks um, right here and comes up and goes right in there. What I had to do to get it off, I took this bolt out. I did not disconnect this. I lifted it up and set it up on top of the bolt. And then got all four bolts out. The one on the bottom to the back of the truck was a pain in the butt to get out, but it finally came loose. So when it came loose, it was pretty rough. But what I did is I just kept wiggling it, moving it back to this side. I had to pull on this a little bit and then I had to pull on this little one just a little bit. I had to take these loose and push them to the inside. At first I thought they'd have to go to the outside, they had to go to the inside. Be careful with this because when the pipe comes down, it's gonna wanna go right around that, that sensor and uh, I don't want to damage those wires, so be very careful about that. Yeah, so this pipe's gonna turn this way. It, as it comes down, you can turn it, and it will come around, and as it's coming down this way, the heat shield is gonna be coming straight down and barely slanted back. As soon as you can wiggle this piece out, the heat shield will come off relatively easy. So, if you don't have an absolute ton of patience, this, what I just did, probably isn't for you. This was a kind of a time consuming ordeal. But if you have patience and you don't mind to just keep working with it till you get it very gently, it wasn't that bad. That one bolt right there, I don't know if you can see it or not. That bolt took the longest. That was the worst part of this. But this other did take, this pipe did take quite a while to wiggle out with this heat shield. But apparently it can be done because I just did it. 
Alright, so the next thing I'm going to be working on is getting these bolts off that hold this plastic cover on. There's a couple across the bottom, I think three across the bottom. And then, if you see, um, them on in, that, there's one, um, there are, let's see, one, two, three. So there's one right there. There are one there, one there, and then there's one on the bottom and the back. I'm gonna go ahead and get those out and I get the plastic cover off. Bolts out. I'm gonna try to wiggle this out right here. There's that. So we can see from the top. I don't know if this is focusing or not. Probably not. But I gotta plug that up. I'm gonna put a rag in the EGR hole right there and right here. But right now I'm just happy to see the injectors. So this one right here, if you can see, that's the one we're gonna be working on. That's number three. So, yeah, this one right here, that's the one we're going to be working on, it is number three. So I'm looking, and if you guys remember, I did a number seven injector connector on this truck not long ago, the white wires right there. Um, see if I can zoom in, I don't know. There's a number seven injector connector that I did not long ago and it's still okay i was really wondering if anybody had done a injector connector on the number three but that's factory wiring so it has not had a connector put on it and i'm trying to decide if i'm going to put one on it i did buy one i'm pretty sure it's this one right here that's going to need to be replaced i did buy it it's with me but we unscrew this I'll make sure we'll follow it around and it is the one that comes into the number three injector I'm also going to unclip and unhook the actual injector, but those things are going to break really easy. And if it's not if it's not broken, I don't plan on replacing it at this point. So yeah, I'll grab a pick and the wrenches and all that and be back. All right, this here is the number three injector. I haven't taken. I haven't really done anything yet. Um, I was told it was a 17 millimeter to get the high pressure fuel line off. So I've already got in here and confirmed that, broke it loose. And what you're going to have to do is when you get on it, turn it one turn, pull your wrench off, spin the wrench. on again and turn it pull it off spin the wrench but at that point it should be loose enough you can take it off by fingers now I'm gonna follow that line around it's got that one loose on this line right here it's connected completely except for at the back I don't see it connected at the back and I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter and take these four bolts out taking the return lines off there are little fuel return line washers make sure not to drop those anywhere that's important but you do have to take them off of all four injectors in order to get to the one that you want get it out of the way to get the injector out the injector connector is kind of unforgiving about like the rest of the connectors on here if you don't if you don't if you're not just right with them they will break so if you don't have a spare which i do but if you don't be very very gentle i'm gonna take the screwdriver get right here in the center toward the center and just try to work it back push the button down and just slip it right out just like that that connector 
doesn't really look that bad. Most of the time when you pull them off, they have burnt spots on the sides and either mines are failing me or that doesn't look that bad, but I will check it again. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna show you both of them, but this is the injector hold down. So these little push pins right here have got to come out and they're just stuck into that threaded hole. And when you get it loose, this is from the top, you'll be able to get a swivel socket right on that injector hold down, the injector hold down. So I'm gonna take that bolt out and then we'll be ready to pull the injector. Now that I've got the ratchet on the injector hold down bracket, I was hoping I would be able to get a better shot of it than that, but there is absolutely no room down in there. But this is what it looks like. Going to the injector connector bracket with a swivel socket on the end, 10 millimeter swivel socket on the end. The way that I saw to do it is to flip the keeper over and then push down and pop it out. There's not really enough room for me to do that. I didn't figure out how to do that, but I did take a pry bar. I'm not using this injector again, so I took and put it right under the threaded end of the high pressure line and came right out over here and it is working. It's slowly but surely, but it is working. And there it is. Might have to run through this. Here it is. And it had a lot of crud around here when I pulled it out. I wiped it off before I thought about putting it on camera. I did see the copper washer at the bottom and the O-ring was intact when it came out. Um, and in that injector connector, that doesn't look real healthy. It looks, I don't know. Anyway. Like I say, while I'm right here, I may go ahead and put the other injector connector on. It just depends on how the rest of this goes. But I'm going to go ahead and get the other one out of the box and start getting get started putting this back together. Here is the new injector. I'm going to leave all this, these plugs in until I get it in. That one's kind of worked its way out. I took a picture of this for the flow rate. I'm also getting it on video right here, just in case. Um... I'm going to go ahead and set it back in the hole. I used transmission fluid, automatic transmission fluid on that because it's all I had to lube it up. Give you guys a good shot of it going in. Be very gentle. Go ahead and try to turn it the same way it was when it came out. And then once it goes in, I'm gonna look at it because I've got the camera in the way and everything else. I'm gonna push and twist until it clicks in. And I'm sorry guys, I can't do this with the camera, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the camera down and I'll push it, click it in, and go ahead and install the okay. hold down. So the fuel line, this is the old one. A lot of the videos I've seen and people I've talked to said you can reuse it, but it says to replace it. I've got it. I'm going to go ahead and put it on, but this is the new one. This is the old one. And after seeing the groove in it, and they both got a, they both have a groove, but I'm just worried this one will leak if that injector is not turned exactly right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on next. On the high pressure line, whenever I was putting the new one on, I just ran it down finger tight, put the wrench on it, made sure it bottomed out, and then just snugged it up pretty good. I tried not to over tighten it, but I wanted to make sure it was plenty tight enough it wasn't going to leak. The injector connector uh, hold down was a pain in the butt to get in and out because of the location. And 
we've decided we're going to go ahead and put the uh, new injector connector on. So that's probably going to be what I do next. All right, so we did decide to go ahead and put the new injector connector on. There it is. Anytime you do this, make sure and do a good tug test to make sure that it's uh, they're both crimped on really good. And uh, I already have. I was just doing that for show. Here's a new connector, and I'm gonna get it plugged in. We'll be done. And these wires are both green. As uh, far as I can tell, anything I've ever Anytime I've ever done one, this is like my fourth or fifth one, those wires are not polarity sensitive. So you just hook whichever one to whichever wire. So I'm gonna reach around here and snap this, plug this into the injector, and, and we'll keep going right on along. It's really hard to snap it in to get to everything and hold the camera in such a tight space, but there it is, the wires. I made sure they were not binding and or touching anything you know important. They're just laying on that foam right there. They come out, make a U-turn, go right back into the connector. Connector's in the injector. There that is. So I just kind of wanted to do a little bit of a recap. The fuel rail's on, the inje new injector connector's on, uh, the fuel injector hold down is, I've tightened it up. The new fuel, high pressure fuel line is on. I think the injector part is completely done. The next step is to put the plastic covers back on. So I'm going to do that next. That's pretty simple. I'm not going to try to video much. I mean, it's, it's, it's night time, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and get those on. And um, then I'll start putting the EGR pipe back on. All right. We went in and put this heat shield. It's the last, the last one we put on. The EGR pipe, it can be done to put an injector in but just by pulling that one pipe you know that's what i just did but uh it really wears at your patience i did have to take this bolt out and so i could wheel this line around a little bit and then from under here um the heat shield if i laid it this way it came in from this way it went up i turned it sideways and it went on up in there then I rotated it this way and stuck the pipe in from this side and just had to work it up through there. Like I say, it was really wearing on my patience, you, but it did fine. It took a little time, but it eventually, I, I'm gonna say it took me 25 minutes to get that pipe back in place and start the bolts. So yeah, you really gotta have your patience, but it, it did go. Then we'll put, put the bolts in this shield well, we, we bolted the, I went in and put the top two bolts in the EGR pipe, the bottom two bolts in the EGR pipe and, and torqued all four down. Then I put the bolts in this shield and then I did this shield on top, put that bolt back in and now it's time to put the air box back on. All right guys, it's late, it's cold and I'm about to program the flow rate on the injector. I'll click, oops, service. Now I'm gonna click on injector. I'll click on GM. Sometime when your fingers are cold, it doesn't do right. I'm gonna hit automatic selection for the VIN. I'm gonna hit read the VIN and it will read the VIN. But I'm gonna kind of hold the phone up here. Hit OK. So it just read the VIN. It comes up and asks the 2019 Light Duty Chevrolet truck. All that is correct. Yes. Going to Hot Functions. Engine Control Module. Injector Flow Rate Programming. Cylinder number three. All I've done on the other truck, which is right there, all I've done is open the door, turn the ignition on, and then I got in my truck, turned the heater on, and uh, here we are. So there's a number like this on the top of that other injector. I am going to hit edit. I don't have the number right here in front of me, so 
I'm going to go ahead and put this in, but whenever you hit edit, it brings it up. I'm going to type, just clear this out and put in that new number. So I'm going to do that and then I will be right back. Alright guys, so I went ahead and did the flow rate in the set the flow rate on the injector. It was really simple. It did the Autel MK808 did do it. <clears throat> I was happy about that. Uh, this is taking me about six hours because I'd never done it before. Getting the EGR popped out was pretty rough. But if you take your time and finesse it, it worked. You know, and uh, just trying to be gentle make sure I didn't break anything make sure everything went just the way it's supposed to go I could do it again probably and if I had everything sitting here I think I could do it in almost half that time it took probably five but by the time we checked for leaks and programmed and never all that probably about six hours but I could do it again a lot faster because I had no idea what I was doing that was my first one so anyway the truck is sitting here running no codes, no leaks. Um, everything seems to be really good. Oh, yeah. So, I did get the flow rate set last night. My battery went dead on my scanner. Everything seemed to be going dead or not functioning properly. But um, I set the flow rate, started up, and on on the auto, it's pretty easy. I mean, you get to the screen that I was at, and then I edited the flow rate. I'm gonna insert a picture of the numbers you need to put in. It was F7. You leave the F7. I, I'll put the picture in, and I think it actually tells on there. I had to Google it because I didn't know. The, the numbers on the injector didn't look like the numbers in the flow rate. So, anyway, uh, we got it done. We drove it around. There she is. And it hasn't been started this morning. It was taking a while to start last night, but I think that was because of the... Pretty sure that was because of the, um, I had all the fuel lines off and it was having to bleed the fuel lines, but that's on. Hopefully it'll start right up. And it did, no check engine light. Everything seems good, so. And I'm getting that same notification, the, the coolant sensor is gone. But other than that, <clears throat> when we drove it around last night, it was super smooth. It seemed like it, all the power was back, no codes. So this is about a week and a half later. I'm, on, I'm back at home. What we did, we left Scotia, New York, drove back to Middlebury. We both got loads going to Southern California. And uh, that's about 650 miles from Scotia to Middle uh, to Elkhart, and then 2,100 miles from Elkhart to Southern California, and then about another 13, 1,400 miles for them to get back home. Okay. No lights, no leaks. Everything seems to be good. That did fix the problem. Now, one thing that I wanted to kind of touch on is on the EGR pipe. There is a layered metal shim gasket that goes on that um i didn't replace that i should have but that was the first time that had been taken apart and everything looked really good and i have dealt with those gaskets like that before i should have replaced them it was getting late i i felt very confident i would be okay by not replacing them i recommend anybody replace them you know if i would have had a better place to do what I was doing or more daylight I would have definitely replaced them um, they are like pop riveted to the pipe itself so they can be kind of aggravating to get out and then when you're putting them back on 
you don't have the rivet the, the new the new gasket riveted to the pipe you actually have to hold it and then line everything up so that's kind of why i skipped that and uh the brass o-rings on the fuel return line those need to have been changed i didn't change those either i had i had them i should have but like i say whenever they came apart everything looked so good to me that i felt i would be okay so i went ahead and put the old ones back on and nothing leaked so you know i'm sorry i didn't have more torque specs and all the technicals of it but like i said it was my first time doing it and i didn't have a lot of time to research it before i did it i just got the things that i thought was important but i hope this video helps you guys out i believe it's going to help me out in the future if i have to redo another one or do one on my truck but uh i wish the quality would have been better i could have i wish there would have been more room for the camera and i would have had more time to take my time to make this video but I hope it helps you guys out. I'm going to link the injector connector on Amazon. You can get it cheaper on Amazon. And it comes in a genuine GM bag. You know, it's it's a genuine GM part from the best I can tell. That's what's on my truck on the number four. And it's, like I say, it's cheaper. And when I'm out on the road, I can order it. And it'll be here when I get here. I've actually got two that are supposed to be here tomorrow. Um, and... I'm going to leave a link to the Autel MK808. I'm really liking that liking that tool, that scan tool. Uh, you can get on there and check out the specs or, you know, look it over if you want. And to do this job, I was told that I definitely needed swivel sockets. And the person that told me that was not messing around with me. I could not have done that without swivel sockets. There's so many tight places that you get into. The injector hold down the little bolts that hold down the metal heat shield on the front and the plastic cover on the back there are some of those that i just would not have been able to get to without the swivel socket so you know i'm gonna link everything i can think of that might help you do this job in the description and uh like i say i hope this video helps like share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one